Yeah. What does this, is this selective? It's not selective and differential. It's only selective. It's only selective. Gram positive. Right, it's good for gram positives. So if you can't remember, I'm going to give you a hint. If you, if you have enough information, many things you can figure out, even if you don't remember that. And I'll tell you what the hint is. This has got in it phenyl ethyl alcohol, P-E-A, phenyl ethanol. So um, if this is nasty to some bacteria, to select away from it, then um, if you remember, alcohol dissolves lipids. I don't know if you, we didn't do a whole lot about that. We did a little bit of that. Lipids are in gram negative. Um, what? Yeah, so cell, uh, which, uh, which organism, kind of organisms have more lipids? Gram negative. Gram negative. This might be stuff you learn in lecture, in my lecture you learn. Um, so gram negatives are sensitive to alcohol, and so that's why they don't like to grow on that. Gram positives are not so affected. Of course, this gram negative does. E. coli, like, pretty much handles it anyway, but not very well. You can see it grows less. Um, okay, blood auger. This one's tricky. You have to put it in a baggie to protect you guys. And um, unfortunately, it, the uh, hemolysis doesn't show well. What kind of hemolysis is there? Name three. Beta, gamma, and alpha. Okay, what's beta? That complete. What does it look like? Yeah. Right. Like and if, you take, if you take a look at this plate, you got to hold it up to the light to really see. Um, to really see. You can't see it. Yeah. No, but you, you're going to have to be able to differentiate. What? Uh, so beta is bad. Yeah. Complete yeah. is bad. Because gamma is good. Alpha is partial. Good. Greenish, yeah. Now from the back, you can kind of see that one is greenish, right? This one's supposed to have no hemolysis. It looks like there's a little hemolysis uh -huh. there to me, but look at those. Okay, easy. What kind of plates are these that look milky? Milk plates. Milk plates. Okay, how can you tell if the organism has an enzyme that destroys milk? Clear zone. Clear zone. Which ones have it? 18, 3, and 23. Mm -hmm. Looks like probably a little bit. Perhaps. Okay. <laughs> So, um, well, what's the enzyme? Caseinase. Caseinase. What's the substrate? Caseinase. Okay, this is cloudy lid. But I'm going to take it off quickly. You can see. We're able to do that in the exam? No, I'm going to have a new lid. I'll have a new lid there. That's okay. not, that's not, it doesn't have condensation on it. You're not going to be able to take the lids off. So, um, so what is this, um, what is the Sorry. plate? Starch plate. Starch plate. What is the um, uh, substrate? Starch. 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 What's the Starch. enzyme? Amylase. 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 What's the reagent? Gram's iodine. iodine. Okay, and you know what's a positive test? Mm -hmm. Bacillus cereus. Yeah, well, yeah. Clear zone. Clear zone, clear zone. Clear right. Zone. You're not going to be able to tell if I'm not going to put any of this down there. You're not going to be, and I'm not going to have that. You're not going to be able to tell if it's bacillus cereus. You're only going to be able to tell if it's positive or negative. Okay? So you're gonna put like a, an arrow towards it to say, is this positive or negative? Or Maybe negative? something like that, or it might be labeled. I might have a, separate B, C, plates. A. It might be A, B, C, D. Okay. okay. It'll be clear. Okay, let's go down here. These are some protozoans. These are the plasmodium vivax, five uh, microscopes. Different stages of plasmodium vivax. I'm not gonna ask you which stage it is, um, but I am gonna expect you to know when you look in there that that's P vivax. I am going to ask you for um, um, all of the all of the protozoans. I'm going to ask you the name of the group they belong to. So what's the group? I have the same ring on my phone. Oh, um, here's my phone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you have the same ring? Oh, sorry. It's supposed to be on. Apocomplexa. Apocomplexa. Good. I'm so sorry. This is why I don't yell at people that I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Um, Apocomplexa, that's right. So what is the um, um, what is the way that we have to know in all of the protozoans how they move? Mm -hmm. They don't move. They don't, they don't move. move. Let me just, well, that's not a way. Um, they hitchhike. Right. How are they transmitted? Locomotive. By the Anopheles mosquito bite. By, um, let's see, what else do I want you to know about the, the disease they cause? Okay, so when you look Malaria. through these, I, of course, there's all these different stages, but any one of those stages could come up on the microscope. Mm -hmm. This is what we called, I think I told you this before, this is, this is what we call kind of a double-blind exam. In other words, you've got to look in there and know what it is before you can answer the question. I'm not going to ask you what it is. I mean, may not. Sometimes I might. 
like on the stains, which are next. The stains are um, gram stain. What kind of information can you get from a gram stain? Gram positive arrangement. Shape and arrangement, arrangement and, and the gram reaction. So those are the kind of things I'm going to ask you. If you look in there, those are the kinds of things I'm going to ask. What kind of information you can get from it. So you have to know that it's a gram stain to be able to describe it. Right? <laughs> well, how can you describe that? Look in there. Is a, I forgot. <laughs> it's a, like cloth the clothing <laughs> shape, shape, gram reaction, and arrangement. This Did is you, positive. We give the gram reaction first. This is positive. When it's purple. Why it's don't positive. you look? Shape, shape, shape. Um, some of the shapes in there is the phallococcus, may have distal bacilli, and the color I see is purple, um, that is gram positive, and the pink is gram negative. Okay, she ended up getting all the information out. To really report this, we call it gram positive staphylococci or uh, gra uh, gram negative okay. bacilli, diplo bacilli. Okay? Yeah. That way you have all of the, that's what you're going to, that's what you see. That's how you identify in a gram. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Endospore stain. How can you, what can you see in that? You can see the green and the spores. You can see the green and the green. And, the green. and what else can you see? There's more in there. You'll see the pink. Sometimes we'll cells. give you mixed culture. Ve vegeta the pink. Vegetative cells. Yeah, so what color are they? They're pink. Gr okay, good. The pink. So acid fast. The next slide is acid fast stain. Fuchsia. I've got a mixed culture in there too. Fuchsia. Blue. Fuchsia is acid fast. What are they shaped like? Pleomorphic. Pleomorphic. Okay, good. Pleomorphic. And what's unique about them? They have mycolic acid. acid. That's the reason we had mycolic <coughs> acid fast. And there's something else in there, too. If I was going to ask you, what else do you see in that slide? <laughs> no, it's a mixed culture. No, you can't tell gram stain. It's not a gram stain, so you can't tell the gram reaction. You see fuchsia say? colored, uh, acid fast bacteria, and what else? Somebody else look. Look. Okay, capsule stain. What can you tell from that? Uh, there's a capsule. It is a capsule. You can tell if there's a capsule, right? If there's a clear, capsule clear. Zone. Okay. Would you be able to tell that from an um, acid fast stain? From a no. Yeah. Well, then yes. that's what you need no. to know. Because I'm not going to give you that. I'm going to have you look in there and tell me something about it. Okay? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go to that row. Uh, more and uh, more digestive I don't know. It may. Whatever comes up. Whatever comes up. Whatever I decide. Uh, haven't quite figured that yet. Um, okay, this, uh, what's the enzyme? Good. What's the substrate? Good. What's the positive test? If it's liquefied. liquefied. Okay. What's, uh, what's in the media? Work. <laughs> <laughs> gelatin, gelatin is in the media. You Gelatinase. You made me feel like incompetent. Anyways. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Gelatin's in the media. Then the bacteria have have the enzyme, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we did. Uh, we exposed our plates to UV radiation. So this is the way they actually were supposed to go. That's right. They are. Why? They grow endospores. They grow endospores. Okay, good job. All right, so you see that? these it's, We said here, three-minute exposure on the right half. We covered this. This was exposed. And obviously, it got rid of those. It prevented those from growing, but it does not prevent bacillus cereus. Really. From growing. Not good, not good for sterilization. Okay, nitrate reduction. We just did these. So these should be, should be pretty clear. Uh, what does uh, red mean with no zinc? Positive. 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 Okay. What nitrate. Reduce the nitrate. Nitrite. Good. You got that one down. All right. So positive with zinc. Nitrite. Negative. Reduced to negative. negative. 
test. What, uh, so there's no end product, right? Yellow. And clear with zinc. Nitrate removed, reduced to ammonia. ammonia. Oh, my God. You guys got that one down. <laughs> if it's one out of 50, it's one out of 50. Everybody knows. <laughs> All right. Somebody has to throw that away. Um, catalase test. What's the, uh, what's the enzyme? Catalase. What's the substrate? I don't know. H2S. H2S. Good. Oh, yes. so, so the reagent. Good. To water. H2O2, not H2S. <laughs> Um, hydrogen peroxide. Peroxide. What else can I and oxygen. What, what kind of organisms um, uh, do not have catalase or other enzymes? That anaerobes. Anaerobes. Okay. Obligate anaerobes. Okay, good. Um, okay, um, next section are the fungus. Fungus. Fungi. Now, I'm not, once again, these aren't going to be here, but I'm not going to ask you what the name of the organism is. In fact, these, are, or, you know, fungus especially are are identified by their um, no. spores. So um, I'm really going to, you know, here it is in parentheses, I'm going to ask you about the spores and whether they're sexual or asexual. Okay. All of the fungus, let's see, what else do I need to ask you about fungus? Um, when we get to the yeast, there's some more specific things I might ask you. But, Mostly, I want you to know the spores, sexual or asexual. Okay. okay. Um, next uh, one. These are all the all the spores of the fungus. This one is what kind of uh, what kind of rhizopus has um, a spore that? Sexual. Yep, sexual and asexual. Good. So what is it? What is it called? The sexual spore from rhizopus. Sexual zygos. Zygospore. Zygospore. Okay. Or angiospore on the um, on the asexual one. Eucor, you can just take a look at this and enjoy it. I'm not going to ask you about this. Mm. That's a pretty one. That's a pretty one. I think it's going to be Okay, aspergillus uh, is going to be uh, the same thing. You have to know the name of the spores. And the also, we have to know the name for the mm -hmm. spores to identify them. They have the conidios. There's the conidios. Conidios. And oh. spiritus. And penicillin. That's oh, what that's Right. <coughs> Okay, so let's go over here. More of the protozoans. Um, Trypanosoma gambiens. Once again, we need to know for the protozoans, we need to know the group, their motility, their uh, transmission, and their diseases. Okay, so what is the um, what is the group? Flagellus. Flagellus. Good. What is the um, how do how are uh, flagellates? You can call them flagellates. There's another name for the group. Euglenose. Euglenose. They used to call them flagellates. Yeah. They move by flagella. Yeah, they move by flagella. Good. What disease does it cause? African it sleeping African sickness. sickness. Good. Um, okay, trypanosoma, or yeah, Toxoplasma gondii, excuse me. That's ciliates. No, that's the apocomplexa. That's the apocomplexa, yeah. So there's no locomotion, ingestion of the cyst. Right, just toxoplasmosis. What disease does it cause? Toxoplasmosis. Okay. Uh, Giardia lamblia. This is where these are going to get a little. I think these are are more difficult for students. Sometimes you look in there and go, Oh my God. Thank you. What is that? You know, that's what happens. You get like lost. So make sure you know what these things look like when you're looking in there. Because um, I'm not going to tell you what they are. So um, what is this group? What is a group of Giardia? But euglenose, good. Euglenose. Good. You know, you know, uh, how, what disease does it cause? Diarrhea. Diarrhea. Right. It's called giardiasis, but I would accept diarrhea if you could spell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, these are very light, so uh, during the exam you'll be able to use the fine adjustment knob a little bit, but you can let me know if it's not focused and I'll help you. Um, and then the cyst, of course, is tricky. It looks like the it could be any cyst. Mm -hmm. It's di if different. You know, you look for things that are unique about these. They have those two eye spots, and you can see it in both the trophozoite and the cyst, and when the cyst is wrapped up into a little ball. Um, okay, um, next ones are Entamoeba histamidolytica, uh, although I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, amoeba. 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 Pseudo. Pseudo. good. And how do they move? Pseudo. 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 Good. And yeah, could you spell pseudopodia? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> false feet. It would probably work as well. I think, yeah. If you have, trouble, <laughs> if you have trouble spelling. Um, let's see. What else can I? What else? 
Yeah, keep moving. All the way down to the end. Yeah, because we're going to turn the corner there anyway. Balance hitting pull ID should be easy to spot. This is cilia? Those are the easiest, they are the easiest ones, I think. They're fairly large. They're a ciliate. That's right. What kind of disease? It's the only diarrhea. ciliate that causes disease. Diarrhea. Diarrhea. Uh, diarrhea, yep. Um, uh, what's the difference between the cyst and the trophozoite? The trophozoite isn't that the... It's... Um, the early... That's the early... It's at the... At the Metabolic. Like in the in the picture. Tropos you're about? <laughs> in the microscope. Yeah. What's it? Yeah. In the microscope. That one has like a clear circle around. Okay. It, and it's enclosed. It, okay. The cyst is enclosed. It's got a pretty big capsule. Um, round. All the cysts are really round, mm -hmm. so that can help. The trophozoite. This uh, this histolytica is going to be hard to see because the trophozoites. Once we kill them, they don't have many pseudopodia. But it's not exactly round. It's kind of irregular shape. And the um, and the what is the shape of this? It's like a peanut. That's it. Oh, I love that name, <laughs> that word. But that's the nucleus. The shape of the whole organism is. You can't see right now. Is it? What's the shape? Can you go look is there? Is it here? Is it round? Like an egg? Like an egg. What do you like call oval. an egg shape? Oval. Oval. Okay. Make yeah. oval. Okay. So that's how you can tell the difference. Okay. So, um, and he I'm not going to ask you if it's round or oval. You need to distinguish between the cyst and the, pro, uh, and the trophozoite. That's why I'm giving you some hints about how to tell the difference, okay? I'm not going to ask you the question. I'm going to ask you the disease, the group, okay? Um, okay, so these two are yeast. Um, how can you, what are some distinguishing features of yeast? Uh, looking at them under the microscope, when you look at them. What? Unicellular. Yeah. So are bacteria. How could you tell them from bacteria? Because you might look in there and say it looks like staphylococcus or something. Pseudo. Pseudo. Hyphae. Pseudo hyphae. What do they look like? They're elongated. Pseudohyphae are elongated cells. So you'll see that. See, can you look in there and see if you see elongated cells? What else? I mean, we they're like kind of like stretched out eggs. Yeah, like stretched out. That's that's. Those are called pseudohyphae. <laughs> what else? You mentioned something else about, about their... Budding. What? Budding. budding. Right. They reproduce mm -hmm. by budding. Now, these are the candida. Are a little harder to see the buds. But you can if you look carefully. Um, however, the cryptococcus is really good. If you look at somebody look in there, you can see the bud exactly. Go ahead. Yeah, they're like fully enclosed. Yeah, like little snowman bud. Okay. So, so that's a yeast as well. You also see these have really uh, large and structured um, capsules, so they protect them. So, um, what? Um, so, keep in mind that yeast are are unicellular fungi, right? Okay. Um, this, here's another one. I'm not putting this one on the exam. I like looking at it, but yeah. that one's not it's not that useful. Study. It's not, wasn't even on the lab, was it? No. It wasn't okay. on the study guide. Yeah, okay. Ah. Okay, so now we are in the helmets. Um, the, what you need to know about the helmets are perhaps some structural things, like you can see. Sesto. Sesto. And some proglottids. You need to know the structures, the internal oh. organs. Reproduce. Pretty much uh, ovaries and testes. Um, you need to know the class, the phylum and the class of all the helmets. Mm -hmm. This Sesto, is the phylum of, the, of, of these two are the same phylum. Platyhelminths. Platyhelminths. Sesto. Sesto. This one's Sesto. This Menos. one's Trematinum. That's a class, okay? So, um, you might need to know uh, uh, dioecious or monoecious. They're both monoecious. They're both monoecious, okay? Monoecious. Next, more of these. I'm going to whip through these fast, but not my favorite. This is another <laughs> These are uh, right. These are some more flatworms. Uh, so um, trematodes. They are. Um, they're trematodes. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. So in this case, we've got one male and one female. Monoecious or dioecious? Dioecious. Right. Okay. So now we get to the roundworms. Um, Ascaris lumbricoides. Monoecious or dioecious? Roundworms. How can you tell the male? 
Hoop. Okay. Um, and here the same thing, the male and female, some more roundworms. What, what class do the roundworms belong to? Roundworms and nematodes. Okay, good. And then here is some more same information you need to know. Okay? Okay, any questions? All right. So go back to those things that you think you might get confused about and make sure that you, um, you know, you study them well and make your notes. Oh, yeah.